Okay, today I am going to walk through a prone exam performing upper cervical like C0 through C3 differentiation with UPAs, um, prone UPA and CPA in the cervical and thoracic spine, and then some differentiation of intervertebral versus consto transverse with your UPAs in the thoracic spine. In regard to joint biomechanics, for the cervical spine, the plane of the facet joints is mostly going to be around 45 degrees, and for a thoracic, it'll mostly be around 60 degrees. So as you're doing your UPAs and your CPAs, you want to make sure you're trying to get at a little bit of that angle. Um, and according to the Cook and Maitland text we have, when performing a CPA in the cervical or thoracic spine, you will get relative extension at that segment with the inferior facet of the superior segment gliding inferiorly and posteriorly on the superior facet of the inferior segment. And with your UPAs, you are getting ipsilateral extension and rotation. First, we're going to do assessment of the upper cervical spine C0 through C3. So for C0, moving on C1, I like to stand down beside the patient rather than at their head. You will find, um, I like to find C2 and find the occiput. You're gonna come right down off the occiput into that little divot. I like to go thumb over thumb. And as you give your UPA, you're going to think about directing your force towards the opposite eye. So you'll be here. Then for C2 on C3 and C1 on C2, I like to move to the head of the bed. Come down, find the spinous process of C2. You're gonna go directly off to the side, pick up that soft tissue so you're on the articular pillar. And when you mobilize straight down from there, that will be C2 on C3. Then to get C1 on C2, we need a little bit of rotation to help block out those joints. So if I want to do her right side, I will have my patient turn her head slightly to the right until her nose bumps into that little edge of the face hole. And you're gonna do the exact same thing as C2 on C3. So find that C2 spinous process, go off to the side on that articular pillar and mobilize straight down. It should feel a little bit different for the patient. And that is your upper cervical exam. So similar to, to the um, upper cervical differentiation when you're doing your UPAs and CPAs in the cervical spine, you really want to make sure to pick up that soft tissue so that you're getting on the articular pillar. So for UPAs, um, you're going to go find the spinous process at the level you want, pick up that soft tissue, go slightly off to the side and mobilize down there. So there's your UPA and the other. CPAs, I still like to go thumb over thumb and you're going to want to do the same thing where you're just lifting up that soft tissue and going straight down. I find that it just makes it a little bit more comfortable for the patient. Um, similarly in thoracic spine, when we're not doing a rib differentiation, you just want to find the level you're interested in. For your UPAs, you'll find that little divot right off to the side where the transverse process is at thumb over thumb, mobilize straight down, and then CPAs, you're gonna go right on the spinous process. I like to do the uh, horse on the saddle for this one and mobilize straight down to get that extension movement. Then when we are doing a rib differentiation, what you're going to want to do is find the segment you're interested in. Right off to the side of that is where your transverse process is at but if you go about two thumbs breadths from that spinous process is where you should be able to find where you can mobilize the rib. I'm gonna go thumb over thumb and give her a UPA just like I would on the transverse process. This should be more specific to the costotransverse. I have also learned um, not from our text, but just from other mentors and such, that if you're not getting a good isolated rib movement with that, 
you can use your opposite hand to block the transverse process on the other side and then you'd want to go more um, just like hypoplenar here to mobilize the rib hopefully getting more isolated rib movement by blocking any spinal motion there once you get farther down in the cervical spine during your upas and cpas um, if you're or if you're trying to start in the thoracic spine um, one other trick to mention is that finding C6 and C7, um, when you think you're there, line up your fingers on the spinous process. So I think my middle finger is on C7, I think my ring finger is on T1, I think my pointer finger is on C6. You'll have the patient actively lift their head. C6 should dip away, and it does, which means my middle finger is on C7, my ring finger is on T1. So it's just a nice way to double check as you're going through and doing your UPAs and CPAs.